This is the Citizen NJ0150 and it is the very first Citizen here on my channel and I'm really excited about it because there is a, a lot to talk about this watch. I asked you on Instagram what you wanted to know about this release. So in this video, I will answer your most frequently asked questions like, is this too much of an homage? How cheap does the bracelet really feel? Is it really that great as an all-round watch? How does it compare to a Tissot or even a Rolex? What's up with the different dark colors? And where can I buy them? And many more questions, so let's get started. Right, so we will start out with the hard facts of this watch so we know what we are dealing with here. So we will start out with the case. This is a full steel watch with a 40 millimeter diameter case, a lug to lug of 45 millimeter and a case thickness of 11.8 millimeter. The bezel is slightly domed and polished as are the flanks of the case, whereas the rest of the case has this um, vertically brushed finishing, as you can see. On top sits an actual sapphire crystal, so no hard legs or anything like that, with a little magnifying lens to enlarge the date at three o'clock. Slightly below that date at about four o'clock sits the crown on the watch, which is really tucked into the case, which highlights the angular case shape even more. Inside beats a Japanese automatic movement, a Miyota 8210, which is entirely coated in this very nice and warm golden color, really like that, which you can see through the exhibition case bag. According to Citizen, we can expect a 40 hour power reserve and a water resistance up to five bar or 50 meter which I find a bit lame, to be honest. Uh, a bit more would have been nice, you know. Oh yeah, and the crystal on the back is also sapphire. The dials on all watches of this series come with a very subtle sunburst, which is honestly barely noticeable in some colors. Uh, stick out markers with the green looms and a date at three o'clock. I think most of us recognize the dial layout very well, but I'll get to that in a bit. Okay, now let's talk about the bracelet. The majority of questions I got were, all about the bracelet. How does it feel? Is it comfortable? Does it look or feel cheap? What's with the adjustment options, etc. So let's take a closer look at this one. This is also a full steel three link bracelet, which very much resembles a president style bracelet we know from watchmakers like Olex, for example. The middle links are polished entirely, whereas the outer links continue the brushed finishing from parts of the case. The first thing that I noticed was that there's quite a bit of space in between each link. Not sure if I like it or not, but I guess that makes for a very well uh, ventilated bracelet. Uh, the clasp is a regular folding clasp, which looks and feels now a bit stumpy, but besides that, it's very basic and as solid as you would expect to be, you know, in that price range. You get the option to micro adjust the overall length with a tool and if you want to take out or put in some links, you have to deal with these pin pushes, but they also seem to be able to be screwed out if you look closely. I don't know, I think I need glasses. Uh, I honestly am unsure what to do with these as I haven't got the right size of screwdriver at home, so I did not try it, so yeah. Apologies for that, but definitely something to keep in mind before getting this one. Overall, the bracelet feels okay. Some edges could have been a bit smoother, yeah, but really not bad at all. Most parts are nicely rounded, it's flexible, therefore pretty comfortable when putting it on. And besides, you know, the pin pushers, which are pretty standard in that price range, it really is good looking. I know that some of you also wanted to know how noisy it is since similar price watches like the Seiko I reviewed on my channel, for example, tend to be really rattly and noisy. So I made the ultimate test when unboxing it with my cat. So we make the uh, ultimate rattle test. I got Gooby here behind me and if she is going to wake up because it's too noisy, then it's really noisy. <laughs> And I've got my day just to compare, you know, trying to make it a fair comparison. So we're first going to test the day just and see if Gooby wakes up or not. And then we're going to test the citizen, the green one I have here. Right, okay, number one. Uh, okay, I think the ear was switching a bit. Now it's the citizen. Let me just hold that paper so it's a fair comparison. No f given. <laughs> okay, I guess it's it's okay. I mean, yeah. Kubi does not care. 
As you can see, according to my scientific and absolutely bulletproof testing method, it's still lathered in my Jubilee bracelet, but not noisy enough to wake up my cat. So I think uh, that makes the watch pass the instrument test as not being one. So yeah, all in all, it does not feel as high end as similar looking bracelets. And the emphasis here is on looking, not actually being made similarly, but it's totally okay. So nothing too cheap in terms of feel, but also not extraordinarily good. It's, it's just okay. Right, so now that we have talked about the heart facts, including the bracelet, let's get to the actual wear and how it feels. It has a nice heavy feel to it, weighing a total of 138 grams, according to my kitchen scale, which gives you, you know, a heavy enough feeling on your wrist for those of you who do not prefer lightweight watches. Though it has a rather tame like to lug of 45 millimeter, I am still unsure about whether or not I like it on my smaller wrists. The 40 millimeter diameter really show here, uh, thanks to the case design. And I don't know, I can't help but feel that a 38 millimeter would work so much better proportion wise. So I would only recommend this for wrists above 170 millimeter circumference, I think. Since the dial is so minimalistic, it looks really big when you go for the brighter dial options. Uh, I suppose the black one might be the one best suited for smaller wrists since it visually shrinks at the watch a little bit. So yeah, it is a nicely weight watch. It wears comfortable, you know, thanks to the three link bracelet and its flexibility, but smaller wrists might have a problem visually supporting the rather large dial. So I would not necessarily recommend it for anyone below 165 millimeter wrist circumference, which includes myself. Okay, now that we've got that covered, let's quickly talk about the cram because given the placement, a lot of you wanted to know if it might impact its functionality and whether or not it is easy to handle. So let me say this, visually, I like the positioning. I myself am not a huge fan of overly enlarged, you know, crown guards or anything like that because it usually tends to unnecessarily make a watch look bigger and you know, my wrist just can't handle that. That being said, it is also super annoying if you cannot properly grab a crown to set and wind your watch, that's frustrating. Unfortunately, that's the case here on this Citizen. You really have to dig your nail in to pull the crown out. I mean, at least I had to. And then it's really difficult to be able to differentiate between the different, um, how do you call that in English? Um, you know, the different, like stages or positions, your crown is the positions. Uh, your crown is currently pulled out yet. Plus, as soon as you have it in the position you want it, you can't really wind or set it with two fingers. So you have to, you know, roll it over the side of your finger. And I really don't like how that feels. Um, I also really dislike pulling anything out with my fingernails. Just, bleh. it's a yucky feeling. Um, so yeah, though the crown position makes the case look better, I think it really sucks in terms of usability. Right, let's get to the tricky part of the watch, which has not a lot to do with the watch as a watch itself, but more its availability. So let me explain here. When I posted these watches on Instagram, you know, the black, blue and the green dial, a lot of you wanted to know why the yellow dial is not included. And listen, I would have loved to include the yellow dial, but it's simply not available where I live yet. And on this note, I recommend you check out Teddy's video on this exact citizen, but with the yellow dial. So, you know, make sure to check it out if you wanna see how the yellow one looks up close. Um, but yeah, last year in September, the NJ015081 collection has only been made available in Japan. And at that point, they weren't even sure if it's going to go to the US market at all. And then later on, I got the info that the, I'm just gonna call them NJs, <laughs> are going to be available in the US during spring, summer of this year. So 2023, since last winter. So winter of 2022, uh, you could order the black, blue and green here in Germany, but still not the yellow, obviously. And then there's also a Tiffany blue one, but somehow I can't find it anywhere, not even on the Citizen website. And at this point, I'm not even sure if I made it up or not, if it was even a thing to begin with, I don't know. And so currently, according to some websites, the yellow dial will be made available in the EU this summer. So uh, yeah, the confusion. I really don't understand why Citizen would not roll out the entire color palette at once everywhere. And I'm absolutely sure that without the delay and all this confusion, this would have been a big hit, especially as a gift for people for Christmas. The pricing is all right though. I bought these for 279 euro each, which I think is absolutely fine for what you get. That being said, I would not pay a lot more than that because for, you know, just a little bit more money, I definitely go for a Tissot, for example, which is what I'm going to talk about in a second. 
Um, overall, the dark colors are really nice. They nailed the dark green and the dark blue. But if I had to pick a favorite, it would have probably been the yellow one, even though I have not seen this one in the flesh yet. Okay, last but not least, a lot of you wanted to know how it compares to similarly priced watches that stood out, you know, in the past couple of months and years, like the Tissot PRX, for example. And I can make it really short and simple here. You cannot compare them, not only because of the price difference, but also in terms of quality. It would also be a bit unfair to compare them. If you can and want to spend a bit more, I would definitely recommend the Tissot, even though you're stuck with, you know, I mean, less color options um, in terms of the dial. Some of you also wanted to know whether or not this might be, you know, kind of overstepping the line of being an homage to straight up being counterfeit of the Rolex Oyster Perpetual and well it definitely is meant to look like one if you ask me I mean come on if that is a good or a bad thing is difficult to say I feel like in this regard I'd be throwing stones sitting in a glass house if I were to say that it is not okay uh, to do so since I have been loving and wearing my Seiko tank I mean it looks like a Cartier tank it's interesting to see how I justify those types of watches for more established brands like Seiko or Citizen but don't look as favorably upon uh, there's very similar homages from, you know, Amazon. Um, could be a very interesting video analyzing that in itself. Anyways, for the price, you get a really good looking watch with an okay quality that is definitely going to last you for a bit. It's a fun watch and I can see how it is going to be one of the, you know, future favorite entry watches for lots of people since the design it copies is a classic one to begin with. But if you're looking for more durability and overall quality, I recommend looking at Tissot for that. And that was it for this video. Now you know everything you need to know about this very, very interesting new release from Citizen. I think it was a, and still is a smart move by Citizen, but I wish they would have planned the release a bit better. Maybe, I don't know, just a bit more transparent. There's all this confusion still around for me. Either way, I'm sure lots of people are going to have fun with this watch, but I hope that Citizen is not going to you know, push the homage limits any further, but starts, you know, putting their own spin on designs like that. Anyways, now it is your turn. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Which is your favorite dial color? What do you think about the release strategy here? And what do you like and dislike about this watch? As always, thank you so much for watching this video today. If you have enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. This really helps out the channel. And you know what, subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out on any new videos I post here. And then I will see you in my next one. Bye. I'm back, I'm so excited. I was so sick during Christmas and New Year's. Um, I did film a couple of videos, but I could not release them. I just sounded terrible. My voice was basically gone, but I'm so excited to be back. And I hope you had a great um, transition into this new year. And yeah, I'm really excited. Um, that's it. <laughs> Bye.